Hello, I'm Corey Redekop, Director of Policy with the Burnaby Board of Trade. And I'm joined by Baljinder Narang, who is running in the by-election to join Burnaby City Council. Uh, as the Chamber of Commerce in Burnaby, we work to support our local businesses and employers uh, to foster a competitive, sustainable, and successful community. Uh, and our mission is to serve as a catalyst for economic growth, a convener of business and community, and, and a champion for the interests of the business community. Uh, and that's why in the lead up to the municipal election later this month, we've asked all the candidates uh, to meet with us for these short videos, uh, to share a little bit about who they are and why they're running, and to help you get to know your options for this election a little bit better. So let's get started. The, uh, today I have uh, Val Jinder with me. Hi, Val Jinder, nice to see you. Uh, well, to start you. off, did you want to take a few minutes just to share a bit about yourself, your background, your experience, and, and why you're running for council? So thank you, first of all, thank you so much, Corey, for giving us this time and platform. And, and I think I want to say to, to you and your members that the relationship that the city has had with the Board of Trade up until now has been phenomenal. And I see if I ever get there that I see myself definitely nurturing it. I know as a school trustee, I was very uh, compassionate in, in, in uh, what this Board of Trade had to do and how the school Work, school district works so closely with so many of your members and, and the board itself. So uh, basing it on that, I, I see this as an invaluable uh, relationship that I would wish to continue to nurture. Having said that, why am I running for, um, for, for council? I did run, run last time as well, but I didn't uh, quite make it. But this time, I think the reasons I'm running are, are a little more uh, compassionate. I, I'm running because I think when we look at City Hall, we need to look at representation of the city. And at the moment, I think that's not that's not visibly available. People don't feel when they look at the council to see that they see they see themselves they see themselves represented there. So you know, women, as you know, are more than fifty percent of the of the population. And then when we look at diversity, we look at inclusion and equity. I think you get the idea that there, there are many reasons why I think with my past experience in governance and in, in leadership, I, I believe, and I'm a resident of Burnaby more than 25 years, I kind of feel that um, this, is, this is where I want to be, to be able to speak for the people. Perfect, well, thanks, thanks for sharing that and, and, and your comments there. And uh, to help get a sense of your thoughts on some of the specific priority areas of the Board of Trade and our members and, and local business, we want to ask a couple of uh, questions of all the candidates, um, covering a couple of common themes that we have here at the Board of Trade. So you mentioned being a resident of, of Burnaby, and obviously a, a, a prerequisite to that is, is housing, and that's a perennial challenge for, um, for many people and an issue for the business community in, in, in getting housing that workers and employees can afford uh, to be in Burnaby. So I guess what, what, can, what can and should be done in your mind to support affordable housing in the city? And I'll build on that as one of the, the housing principles that we have at the board um, and that we shared in, in, with the city is, is the idea around gentle density. That, that is, is there a way of adding more development maybe outside of the town center cores to create those missing housing options, row homes, town homes, things that are in between the single family home and the condominium size options. What are your thoughts on, I guess, affordable housing in general and about this idea of, of, of moving towards more gentle density uh, throughout the city? I think um, what I want to share with you is that for BCA, we've made a statement saying that housing is a human right. And that really resonates with me because I do believe that housing is important. And when I look at my children, I want them to be able to afford to live in the city that they've grown up in. So cost of living and housing are important. Having said that, I think development and housing go hand in hand. And to look at housing, uh, housing the first uh, um, priority has been to look at uh, how re uh, the re rental replacement policies that have come about. And I'm very encouraged by those because I think the, the consultation process has come and we've developed some really progressive uh, housing um, requirements that are, that are there. And I know that the Board of Trade was also a party to this conversation when that was happening at the task force. Um, but we are looking at, a city is looking at uh, laneway houses 
It is looking at secondary suites and duplexes. It is looking at maintaining standards for these, maintaining uh, maintenance standards for these uh, uh, and bylaws to make sure that the housing quality is, is maintained. And then there is this idea of uh, looking at gentle um, density, densification, if you will, of single, single family uh, district, zoning districts, and perhaps lot sizes and things. All these are initiatives that, that we are current, that the city is currently thinking about and, and consulting with. And those are areas that I think are great areas. And I think those are areas that can benefit the communities as a whole, the business community, as well as the residents and, and, the, and the nonprofit community. So, thanks for that. Uh, you mentioned in those comments, you mentioned kind of the city developing and, and, and growing. And, and so I want to move on to planning and, and development. And did you have any thoughts? Uh, yeah, yeah, we've we've uh, known you in your, in your roles in the, in the city and with, with the uh, school district for a number of years. What's your, what are your thoughts on the development of the city over the past number of years? And, and where do you think it should go or how should it grow as we move forward and the city continues to mature? We saw a record-breaking, near record-breaking building permits last year despite the pandemic. So there's definitely a lot of action and, and activity going on in the city. Do you have any thoughts on, on what you'd like to see or how you'd like to see the city grow uh, in the years ahead? I think what the pandemic has taught us, uh, Corey, is that safety and outdoor spaces are absolutely essential. So I think um, developments, I foresee that as developments happen, more attention will be paid to spaces that have uh, flexibility in, in terms of providing open, open spaces yet in a safe way. And yet, uh, so I think the designing of our properties is going to be very um, different because we've learned from the challenges that the COVID-19 has presented. Having said that, I think uh, the development as, as you know, for the last 40 years or so, uh, when it was Greater uh, Vancouver uh, Regional District, the four quadrants came about and they are, the development has focused on the four quadrants. And I think it's, uh, it's, uh, it's pretty intense now. And I think, de de you know, depending on what we were talking in housing, it has to ease into other areas as well because of the shift. But have, if we develop, then I think we have to have an infrastructure for transportation. So those two go to hand in hand. Transportation that links the north and the south and east and the west, because Burnaby has traditionally been a, a, a city that people go through. And now lots of people are staying and making home. So Burnaby residents need their space so that they can move about in the city in a comfortable way, in a friendly way. So those would be the areas to look at the infrastructure for transportation. And then that leads again into perhaps another question that you're going to bring up, but it will probably come into how the green energy is, is uh, becomes a very close uh, component of transportation. Perfect. And, and yeah, we're, do, we're doing well on segues here. So I will bring up climate and, 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 uh, and uh, climate change in, in a moment here. But you mentioned on, on transportation. So the, the, the Burnley Board of Trade, we had a, a task force that put together 22 recommendations to the city to improve transportation. And that was everything from building more north-south capacity, um, protecting parking hubs and business districts as a way of kind of making a one, one drive to there and then you can, you can walk the rest and improving rider amenities and transit services throughout the city. Um, what do you think are, are, should be the priorities or what would be your priorities for, for transportation? As you mentioned, there, there, are, there are some competing interests around move, moving people through the city, amongst the city, the movement of goods and services. What do you think should be the priority or how should we, how should we tackle improving transportation in the city? I think, I think we need to look at our values. I think uh, you're right, transportation need, needs are increasing and people need to move into the city quickly and, and safely. Um, not going into specifics, because I think without having uh, looked at that plan in great detail, as I've said, we'll be looking at uh, maybe looking at designing and building cycling routes, maybe looking at uh, separate sidewalks, separate uh, paths for multi-use paths, 
and then perhaps even uh, cycling routes that are separated from the auto traffic. And then parking, I, th I think the parking issue has implications for uh, if we're looking at laneway houses or if we're looking at uh, intensifying maybe secondary suites and duplexes. So I think from that point of view, some of the recommendations that are coming from the board are, are going to be really important to consider as well. So in terms of priorities, I think it will be very much um, how these are how these, uh, presented. And then the lens would be very much to look at how it would benefit the community at large. So those would be the lenses or the values, if you will. Mm -hmm. I, I would see myself approaching these uh, in a systematic uh, process. Perfect. And, and, and yeah, not to, not to get into specific, specific ideas here, but I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to propose one. Have you given any thoughts on um, how you would vote if you had a vote on the Burnley Mountain Gondola Project? On what project, sorry? The, the gondola. Ha! That's a good one. <laughs> that's a good one. I would go back to the basics of really listening to the present presenters. I don't want to prejudge the uh, situation because there are very compelling cases being made on both sides. People who are passionate about wanting it and those who are passionate about not wanting it. And I think, I mean, end of the day, Burnaby will, will uh, it's not a Burnaby project. It is a project that's linked, tra it's TransLink's project and, and depends on how, yes, it will be impacting our city, but in terms of how much of a say we will have in it, I don't know. And that again, uh, remains to be seen as, as, as this one rolls out. So, but, but all I can say to uh, people is that I will definitely be open-minded about it. And I don't want to prejudge the situation because I haven't heard all the arguments. No, fair enough. Appreciate, appreciate your comments on that. You, um, you had touched on, on climate, so I wanted to move to your, your thoughts on there. I know the city had, has done a lot of, of work on uh, the climate change and, and climate emergency. Do you have any, what, what would be your, your guiding principles or what, what's your framework for kind of how the city should be combating and mitigating the impacts of climate change and how far and how much action should be done in that space? Well, um, climate change is a reality and I think we cannot deny it anymore. I'm just putting that out there. I have children and I worry about that if we don't make the right choices now, that we will be held negligent on our duty by them. So I'm glad that uh, Burnaby passed the climate emergency resolution uh, and that we need to have a goal of achieving carbon neutral neutrality by 2050. That's an ambitious goal. And I think to that, to that end, I'd like to see uh, an annual reporting system where we can track how much we're staying on target. And that would, you know, instead of waiting for 2050 to say, oh, how are we done? I would rather we had a mechanism of tracking our progress as we go along so that we can, you know, share it with our communities. And so that it's like to buy, get a community buy into the, into the process, because that is very important. We have the community buying into what we're trying to achieve. We'll find that there'll be a lot more engagement and, uh, and, uh, cooperation, if you will, and, and you know, motivate people to actually uh, com as well comply as well. So we would be looking at uh, facilitating facilitating safe, accessible, low carbon transportation. We would be looking at um, you know, seeing look at the city itself would be looking at uh, the fossil fuel based vehicles to replace those with. Uh, either electric or green uh, energy, um, green, green hydrogen powered vehicles. So those would be some of the things that we would start off with. And, and then I'm sure as, 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 uh, as the business community, you also would have quite a few recommendations that you would probably be sharing. Perfect. Thanks for that. And, and yes, when, when the city declared the, the climate emergency, yeah, we had written a letter to council saying that yeah, as a, as a business association and, and business community, we were ready to, to engage where we could to help the city beat those, those goals because they are ambitious. But as I'm sure you know, for, for 15 years, climate has been a, a number one priority for, for the Burnaby Board of Trade and making sure that we're moving, we're moving well, in the right and, direction. On and your yeah. pledge program was, was incredible. And I'm, I'm sure it's still going strong. Yeah, and there's been yeah, a lots of lots of changes in that space. Have they? Okay. Yeah. yeah. 
The um, looking one of the things that kind of a, a fundamental role for for city council uh, uh, government is around planning development and kind of how the city is, is moved in that space. So we talked a little bit about the growth of, of the city. One of the I got my kind of the final two questions before we wrap up here. One of the issues that we're concerned around is the erosion of industrial land. So we're seeing, and Burnaby still has a, a, a decent um, inventory of this, especially as we, as we look in some of the pockets around the city, but we have some concerns that in, in estimates, the region as, as, as a whole will run out of industrial land capacity within a few years. Um, would you be supportive of protecting and, and preserving industrial lands and kind of holding the line against those, those areas that are used by businesses and light industrial now being converted too quickly into, into say residential or other uses without creating opportunities for those businesses to move elsewhere in the city. Um, so that net, net loss of, of commercial industrial land is a concern. What, what would your thoughts be on that? Uh, my thoughts initially as you were speaking, Corey, was um, again, like, like any project, there are probably compelling arguments on both sides and I would not like to see myself into a position of having to say yes to you or no to you without really understanding what the implications are. In principle, I would say that if we have industrial land that needs to be preserved as on a principle, that's something I would be uh, sympathetic to, but we would have to see what the compelling arguments are and, and what uh, comes forward. I think as, as a counselor, um, we are dependent on, on the information and the research that we get, not only from our staff, but from our stakeholders. So I would be listening really hard to see what the general thing is, because we end up having to make some decisions that are, that are not everyone's uh, you know, to liking, but that, that's the way it is, that's how it is. So um, I would draw on our excellent re relationship and, and hope to work together on that. Uh, thank you for your comments and for sharing your thoughts with us. And for those of you watching, we encourage you to view all the videos. We've invited all the candidates to do these, these interviews and conversations with us. So please take a look at all of those so you have as much information as you need to make your choice for the, the election in the Burnaby by election uh, later this month. So thanks again for watching and thank you, Baljinder. Thank you so much for it. Appreciate that.